Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to explain multiprocessing in Python. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. What's up? Let's talk about multiprocessing. Multiprocessing is the act of running tasks in parallel on a different CPU cores. It's different from multithreading, although it sounds similar, because with multithreading, we're limited to running one thread at a time because of the GIL that lock, which is used for threading. We can run threads concurrently, but not in parallel. However, with multiprocessing, we can create processes and we can run each process in parallel on a different CPU cores. So with multiprocessing, it's better for tasks that are CPU bound, where you need heavy CPU usage, whereas multi-threading, that is better for IO bound tasks where you do a lot of waiting around. So before we begin, I recommend these two imports, multiprocessing and time. Let's begin. Quick note, if you're running the Windows operating system, you'll probably need to add this line, if name is equal to main. So when we run a program, we have a main process that is running. And if we create a child process from that process, it's going to copy the module that we're currently working with. And that child process will create its own children processes and it's going to be a problem. So we're going to add this line if name is equal to main. So when we create a child process, it will copy our module, but it's not going to execute it. So let's create a main function and a majority of our code is going to be within our main function. If you're running a different operating system, you probably don't have to do this, but if you're running Windows, you probably will. Now with multiprocessing, multiprocessing is better for tasks or functions that are CPU bound where they require heavy CPU usage. Let's say that we have a function named counter and we'll pass in a number to count up to, but the number we're going to pass in is a ridiculously large number like a billion. So let's create a function that will count from zero. So count equals zero and while count is less than our number that we pass in, we will increment our counter by one. So that is the function that we'll call with our processes that we create. Now within our main function, we'll create a process. And to do that, you'll need the multiprocessing module. So import process and CPU count, and we'll save this for a little bit later. To create a process, let's say we have process A. A equals process. This step is very similar to creating a thread. We have a target. Our target will be our function of counter. And if we have arguments, we will pass those in. So remember with our arguments, we have to pass in a tuple. Since we only have one argument to pass in, to differentiate this from an expression, we have to add a comma at the end. So our number, let's say is 1 billion. So that's a million, 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion. Let me just verify that. Okay, so that's 1 billion. We're going to count from zero to a billion. And in order to start this process, A, my process, use the start function. And then I will use some process synchronization by using the join function. My main process is going to wait around for my child process of A to finish before continuing. And let's print our performance counter. So we'll print finished in, let's say, time dot performance counter seconds. Okay, so let's see how long it'll take to count from zero to a billion using one process. I fast forwarded this video, but it took my program 56.7 seconds to count from zero to a billion, but we can speed this up by using multiprocessing let's create a second process named B. And I'm going to divide the amount of work in half. So each process will count to 500 million, half of a billion. So let's change A to B. And I'm gonna group these start functions together just so it's easier to read. And then B.join just to synchronize everything. Okay, and then let's change 1 billion to 500 million for each. It's the same amount of work, but divided among workers. So that is 500 million. Let's see how well it runs this time. 
So it took my program about 40.3 seconds to finish counting from zero to a billion, but I divided that task among different processes. Each of my two processes counted from zero to 500 million this time. So this time let's create four processes. So we have A, B, C, and D. And we'll need to start them. And I'm going to join them. Now this might not actually speed it up for you and I'll explain why later. It depends on the amount of CPU cores that you have. Okay, so, oh, let's change this too. So 250 million for each. Okay, see you in a couple seconds. Okay, welcome back. So on my computer, when I ran four processes and each was counting up to 250 million, I could finish my program in 27.3 seconds. Now, for me, if I created more processes than this, it would probably take longer, and here's why. So you can print the CPU count of your computer using this function of CPU count. So if I were to print whatever this function returns, I can get the count of the number of additional processes that I can run. For the time being, I'm just going to comment out this start function because I just want to print whatever this value is. So my CPU count on my computer is four. So I can run four additional processes, but let's attempt to run eight processes. So I'm going to copy all of these and let's say that we have E, F, G, and H. And we will start all of those two. So give me a second just to start them. So A, B, C, D. E, F, G, H, and then I'm going to join all of them. E, F, G, and H. Okay, so let's run this now. Oh, and change the arguments too. I keep forgetting to do that. So let's say 125 for each. So 125 million times eight is one billion. Okay, see you in a bit. All right, welcome back. This time when I had eight processes working, it actually took me longer than when I had four processes working. When I had four processes working, it took me about 27 seconds. This time it took 30 seconds when I had eight processes working. That's because I had more processes than my CPU count. And that's partially because whenever you create a process, there's significant overhead with beginning and destroying a process. And if I can only run four processes on my computer at one time, well then I'm creating additional processes to no extra benefit. It's actually hindering the performance of the computer because I'm creating all of these additional processes when it really doesn't help me. In conclusion, multiprocessing is the concept of running tasks in parallel on different CPU cores. It's similar but different from multithreading because with multithreading, we can run tasks concurrently, but they're all taking turns because of the GIL. With multiprocessing, we can run all of these different tasks together in parallel. Multiprocessing is better for CPU bound tasks, where a task has heavy CPU usage, and multithreading is better for IO bound tasks, tasks that involve a lot of waiting around. So that's multiprocessing. If you would like a copy of all this code, I will post all of this to the comment section down below. But yeah, that is how multiprocessing works in Python. Hey you, yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.